Hello, folks. We are uh, just about ready to read the last chapter of this book, this amazing book that we've been reading called How to Intercede Effectively. Um, we are actually on chapter six as qualities of the effective intercessor. Um, so let's go ahead. And if you guys are wondering how come I'm dressed the way I am, it's because it's freezing where I live right now and um, I'm out in the garage. So, <laughs> uh, so go ahead, let's get started. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for um, for this amazing book, Lord. I, I thank you that uh, you've used um, David Middleton to uh, write this book and um, to help us to be better um, intercessors and better better men and women of God. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that, um, that we are uh, doers of the word and we're not hypocrites deceiving ourselves. Father, I thank you that our lives are um, are put in order. Our lives are, um, are completely 100% uh, to follow you and obey you and uh, that there is no sin that we uh, that we have in our lives there we do not yield to sin we do not yield to the flesh but we only yield to the spirit i thank you father that we walk in power i thank you that we are mighty men and women of god who who uh, are our doers of the word who, who do the word and who our lives reflect you your son uh, our lives are uh, righteous in christ uh, we are holy because you are holy and, and because you are coming for a holy and spotless bride. So we are holy. We are spotless without blemish. There is no sin in us because you are in us. Because you are in us, there is no sin in us. Amen. Uh, we thank you, Father God, for uh, sending your son Jesus to die for us on the cross. Uh, and I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, speak to us through this uh, last chapter. And that would be a, a great time unto you, Lord. I thank you for the fellowship that we're having um, through social media. And Father, I pray, Lord, also, if there is any people out there that are compromising their walks with you, that um, they have uh, things that they need to clean up in their lives. You know, I'm not one to point a finger at nobody, um, but you do definitely want us to be um, to be accountable to one another. And you want us to, more importantly, to be accountable to you um, so that so that there so that our testimonies are um, are powerful. We want our testimonies to be powerful. Um so I just pray, Lord, that if there's anything in me, Lord, if there's anything in me that needs to be cleaned up or if there's anything, um, just please reveal it to us, reveal it to our hearts, reveal it to our minds, just because we want to we want to come out of this out of the fire uh, clean and purified and sanctified in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are going to read chapter six is qualities of the effective intercessor. Let's go ahead and get started. Our goal as an intercessor is to be effective. Praise God. To be effective, we must have certain qualities established in us. As we are established in these qualities, the Lord will use us mightily to destroy the strongholds of Satan and bring forth the will of God in the earth. First, we must know that we are righteous and have a righteous, righteousness conscious, consciousness. Man, righteousness consciousness. Jesus was made to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness, amen, of God in him. Thus, we who are in Christ are righteous and in right standing with God. At least we should be. I hope, hope, hope you guys are. I hope we all are. Uh, it is important that we have a righteousness consciousness and that we are in right standing with God. We know that we, when we know this, we will know that our prayers will be heard. Look at First Peter um, chapter three, verse twelve. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are upon their prayers." When we know that our prayers are heard as we pray in the line with the will of God, which is His word, we know they will come to pass. This is declared in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. As righteous children of God, with a consciousness of right standing with him, established in us, we know that God will hear our prayers and bring them to pass as we pray in line with his word. 
a second quality is commitment. We must be committed to the ministry of intercession. No partial commitment to intercede will be effective. Satan will push you to the point where you will waver in your commitment if it is shallow. Again, Satan will punish you, or no, will push you, I'm sorry, to the point where you will waver in your commitment if it is shallow. We, the church, must accept the ongoing long-term assignment to intercede until Jesus comes back. Jesus is at the right hand of God making intercession for us, and he ever liveth to intercede for us. We see this in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, and Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Romans 8, 34 says, It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is given at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Since Jesus is at the right hand of God, committed to make intercession for us, we need to wholeheartedly commit, amen, to enter into his labor of intercession. Wholeheartedly commit. Amen. I love that. Since Jesus ever liveth to intercede for us, we need to ever live to make intercession for others with a firm, unwavering, long-term commitment. We are exhorted to occupy until he comes. As we continually enter into the labor of intercession, I like that word labor, labor of intercession, with a deep commitment to do the work of the Lord, we will occupy until he returns. A third quality is discipline. Whatever we are disciplined in doing reveals the priorities of our life. Man, that's a good Facebook post. Um, intercession must be a priority in our daily walk with the Lord. The only way that intercession will be a priority is for you to set a definite time each day to intercede. In the book of Acts, the church had a regular daily hour of prayer. Without a regular time set aside for prayer, you will just try to fit intercession in whenever it works out for you in your daily schedule. You'll never intercede consistently. Satan will bring circumstances and other priorities along so that you don't fulfill what should be a daily priority. Without a disciplined time set aside, the flesh will talk you out of interceding. Your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Your disciplined time of intercession should be as firm as your scheduled time to report for work on your job. Your er earthly job is important and you must do your job consistently. We have a spiritual job to do as well. That job is intercession. Every believer must do their job of intercession with discipline. With a specified time, you will intercede daily and create a habit of interceding. Once the habit of intercession is worked out into your life, you will continue in it and be mightily used by the Lord. As you continue in it, you also will grow and develop and become highly effective. Give yourself to God and be disciplined with a daily hour of prayer. I agree 100%. A fourth quality for effective intercessors is love. In John 3.16, the Bible declares that God so loved the world that he gave. Love always gives. When we intercede, we are giving ourselves. Intercession, therefore, is an act of love. Amen. I love that. Intercession, therefore, is an act of love. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
As you intercede, you are giving of yourself to help others be set free. God's love will fill your heart as you lay down your desires and minister to the needs of others. Your love for the brethren will certainly increase and abound as you labor in love through intercession. Intercession is really loving in the spirit. The more you are filled with the love of God, the more you will be motivated to intercede for others and not please yourself. Wow. Um, love and selfishness are opposites. Love gives while selfishness takes. Put away selfishness and begin to love others through intercession. Ooh, man, this is a great chapter. If you have a bad attitude toward other another person, go intercede for that person. Great. As you pray blessings upon them through intercession and deliver them from the strongholds of the enemy, you will see your attitude change to one of love. Intercession will bring love into your heart as you see the person as God sees them. As you enter into consistent intercession, the Lord will lead you into a deeper revelation of the love of God. The reason is because your heart will become in tune with his heart of love. As we all increase and abound in love, we will become effective intercessors. A fifth important quality is boldness. It takes boldness to confront the satanic forces in the heavenlies to pull them down. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28.1 The wicked flee when no man pursueth. <laughs> but the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. As the righteousness of God with the authority of the Lord Jesus, we can boldly enter into warfare, intercession, and destroy the works of the devil. Without boldness, you will hesitate or draw back in fear. Those who are afraid and draw back cannot win their spiritual battles. Ain't that the truth? And that's why people are struggling. That's why people are getting their butts whipped by Satan. Because they are they are afraid. They get a spirit of fear in them. Because there's sin in them. And they run with their tail between their legs. And they hide behind the pulpit. Instead of under the wings of the Almighty God. That is a problem. That is a big, big problem in the church. Um... I was once there myself. You know, you're going to be find out. God's going to find you out. You're going to be found out. The Bible says that um, that the truth, that the truth shall set you free. And it's the lie will definitely not set you free. The lie will keep you bound. The lie will keep you in bondage. The lie will keep you in addiction. It will keep you in fear. Um, she, Jezebel, will keep you bound. And or Ahab or Leviathan or any spirit that will try to come up and raise its, its ugly head up against you, any unclean spirit. Um, that's why we need to bind the enemy and and cast him out or her out or it out or all of it out in Jesus' name. It takes boldness to enter into the prayer fight and prevail against the enemy. A sixth quality is fervency. Fervency is important in prayer. You must learn to stir yourself up and pray fervently. When you pray fervently, you put your all into it. Your spirit, soul, and body will be involved in releasing the power of God through intercession. Look at James 5, verse 16. It says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We, as the righteous, can pray fervently to release the power of God. 
Hear that? We as the righteous can pray fervently to release the power of God. You, you can't. You're not going to be able to release the power of God if you're if you're in sin. It ain't going to happen. Many wait for a special feeling or a burden to get stirred up to pray fervently. It's not a feeling. It's not a it's not a special thing. You know, we got to be able to pray fervently in, at all times. The Bible says that we have to be ready in and out of season, season to preach the gospel. Many, many wait for a special feeling or a burden to get stirred up and pray fervently. That is learning, leaning on the flesh. You can stir yourself up to pray fervently and eventually and eventually your feelings will line up with your spirit. Look at the testimony about Ephraphus Ep in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Ephraphus, Ephraphus, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salute, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. See, that's what we need to be praying. We need to be praying that over our enemies, over our haters. So right, let's do it right now. So Father, I just pray for my, I pray for all my haters out there, Lord, all the haters out there that are hating on, on, on me, Lord, hating on you in me. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that well, you're gonna you're gonna complete your work in them, Lord. That you're gonna you're gonna um, continue to use people to to speak the will of God over them. And I just I just I just loose every offense from my heart in Jesus' name. Every tongue that rises up against me, I just bless them right now in the name of Jesus. I truly, truly, truly bless them, Lord. I bless every hater, every God hater. Father God, for you're the one that's going to bring judgment on them, not me. I bless them. I'm not the judge. You are. So I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ephraphus was laboring fervently in prayers so that the Colossians would stand perfect, mature, and complete in all the will of God. If we will labor fervently in prayers, those we pray for will stand mature and complete in all the will of God. See, that's another thing is we can't, um, a lot of times, if you don't see fruit in somebody's life, it doesn't mean that, that, that you're, what you're doing is in vain because they're, whatever you're doing, whether, it, as long as it's sharing the love of God with people, um, and it's truly from your heart, uh, and somebody listens to that and they hear it, whether they receive it or not, it doesn't matter because if it's the word, the Bible says that the word will not return void. So if you don't see somebody, if you don't see the fruit of your labor, it doesn't mean that that what you're doing is 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 in vain or it's you know it's uh, don't let it discourage you. <laughs> I actually encourage you in Jesus' name to continue to do what you're doing, to continue preaching the gospel, no matter if there's anybody watching you that or not. It doesn't matter because. As long as you're preaching the gospel, it's all that matters. Eventually, that word will go forth and it will save somebody. It will win somebody to the Lord. It will get them set free. Um, you can't let the spirit of offense to bother you and offend you, especially as a man or a woman of God. We have to keep preaching, and keep preaching, keep preaching, keep preaching the truth, because in reality, we're preaching to ourselves. Just like right now, I'm looking at the camera, I'm looking at myself. No, even though there's nobody on here watching me, I'm preaching to myself, right? You know what I'm saying? So we're preaching to ourselves so that we could be better in Christ. Hopefully that somebody will hear us and they're going to receive it as well. So that's a really good analogy. Uh, a seventh quality is sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Learn to respond to his call for you to pray. Often there will be a gentle nudge in your heart. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit and begin to pray. When you intercede, learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit often speaks with a still, small voice. As you learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give you revelation regarding what to pray for and instructions on how to pray. Keep your mind tuned into the Lord. Don't let it go off and think on something else. Keep your mind and will are to cooperate with your spirit during intercession. Your mind and your will are to cooperate. 
with this with your spirit. As you pray, let the Holy Spirit guide you in how you pray. You may enter into groaning and travailing in the spirit during a time of intercession. The Holy Spirit may have you pray quietly or loudly. You may enter into strong warfare in the spirit against the powers of darkness. There may be weeping and tears or strong crying during your time of intercession like Jesus experienced. Sometimes your tongues may, may change and come out in different languages. Don't resist the leadership of the Holy Spirit, but instead flow with him. The Holy Spirit knows what to pray for. What occurs during Holy Spirit directed intercession is what is necessary in the spirit. Sometimes you may have feelings like the person whom you are praying for. Just flow with the Holy Spirit until the battle is won. Amen. You must let the Holy Spirit guide you also in how long you pray for a person or situation. You may pray for a few minutes or you may or many hours of, or days. If it takes many days of intercession to see a breakthrough, don't cast off the desire to pray after you finish a session of prayer. Just stop for that day as you are led by the Holy Spirit and pick back up where you left off in the spirit the next day. Don't be moved by how long it takes. There are varying strengths of satanic forces and bondages and control of situations or people which you will encounter in intercession to overcome. The enemy know that power is flowing out of you according to the principles of intercession. Know that you are hitting the mark in spirit. Don't be moved by your feelings as to the effectiveness of your intercession. And that's what I just talked about. Have faith in your intercession by the Holy Spirit. Know that God is not holding back the manifestation of victory. Know that you are in a battle with the enemy and must intercede until the victory is won in the spirit. Pray until a note of victory comes. Often this is shown by the Holy Spirit when the burden for prayer is lifted or a light feeling comes forth in your spirit or there is a lessening of desire. When you have finished praying successfully, there will be a release within your spirit, a joyful feeling or a peace about the situation. You will know within your spirit that the work has been accomplished. As we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we will see great effectiveness in our intercession. An eighth quality is perseverance. When we pray with perseverance, we will intercede persistently and con consistently. Look at the following scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Romans 12, 12 says, Continuing instant in prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Luke 8, 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Because what happens when you faint? When you faint and you stop praying, you're giving an open door to the devil. We are to watch and pray with all perseverance. As we continue to, in prayer, we will see victory come forth over the enemy. We do not pray a few minutes and then give up. We are to pray without ceasing until we see the word come to pass. We ought to always pray and not faint. As we pray, as long as it takes, with all perseverance, we will see that the battle will be won. Thus, the qualities necessary for effective intercession are righteousness, commitment, discipline, love, boldness, fervency, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and perseverance. As these qualities are established in your prayer life, you will intercede effectively. Summary. Intercession is important in the life of every believer. As we intercede, we release the power of the Holy Spirit against the enemy and bring forth God's will in the earth. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, and we have a spiritual enemy, the devil who has a kingdom of darkness. 
We have authority over Satan and we pull down his kingdom through the spiritual warfare of intercession. A spiritual battle must be waged against the satanic forces in the heavenlies. As we win the battle in the spiritual realm, we will bring down the kingdoms of this world under the control of Satan and bring forth the rule of God in the earth. Effective intercession will light upon and hit the mark in the spiritual realm by the power of the Holy Spirit. We will fall upon the enemy to his destruction. We will press back the forces of darkness and establish the legal spiritual boundaries belonging to the church. We will make up the edge of protection and plug up the gaps. We will lift and remove the weakness from the impotent and the heavy weights from the oppressed. We will root out, pull down, destroy, and overthrow the enemy in the heavenlies. We will plant and build the rule and reign of the kingdom of God. As we intercede, we invade the heavenlies and seize control of it from the devil. We pray according to the word of God with our understanding. We bind and loose the satanic forces in the heavenlies and cast them down. As we pray the word, the warring angels hearken to it, bringing it to pass. We pray with our spirit and tongues. We enter into groaning and travailing in the spirit to deliver people and places from satanic bondage and to birth into being the will of God in the earth. Jesus was an intercessor who prayed fervently with strong crying and tears and groaning in the spirit. He contended with Satan through the prayer fight and prevailed over him. The New Testament church was built upon intercession. As they prayed at regular times daily, the Lord moved mightily doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Paul was an intercessor who wrote the epistles of the New Testament by revelation received through intercessory prayer. As we pray with fasting, it aids us by letting go of the natural realm and bringing us into the spirit to release the power of God. Fasting changes us by humbling our soul and it helps us to overcome our unbelief so we can do the works of God. As we fast and pray, we will lose, loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free and break every yoke of bondage. Our rewards for fasting and prayer include revelation, health, power, peace, the presence of the Lord, answered prayer, meeting the needs of others, understanding guidance, our needs met in the soul and body, rebuilding the foundations of generations, amen, repairing breaches, restoring paths to walk in, being pliable and adaptable to the Lord and authority over the enemy, in the heavenlies and receiving our inheritance with complete provision. And that's, it's all about building the foundation. We want to build a foundation upon the rock of Jesus, because if the, if the foundation is built on anything other than Jesus, it's not going to stand. It won't stand. It might stand for a little bit, a week or two weeks or a month, a couple months. But then when the storms come, that's it. The fall, house falls. To be effective in, in the ministry of intercessory prayer, the qualities of righteousness, commitment, discipline, love. To be effective in the ministry of intercessory prayer, the qualities of righteousness, commitment, discipline, love, boldness, fervency, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and perseverance must be established in us. The results will be the manifest rule and reign of the kingdom of God, bringing liberty and restoration in the church and in the earth. The gospel will be preached throughout the earth. Bondages will be broken. Christ will be formed in new believers and we will be complete in all the will of God. As we have now learned how to intercede, let us all be doers of the word, amen, and enter into the labor of intercession and intercede effectively. And that is it. What else has he got? Let me see if you got anything here. Okay. So he, there's a, he offers if anybody wants to, um, okay, I'll do that in another video. Okay, thanks. Peace out in Jesus' name. Peace, my brother, my sister.